menu engineering, the purpose of menu engineering is just to take a closer look at uh, how your menu is doing so that you can interpret it for yourself, for your own purposes as the manager, as the chef, but also you can, so you can explain to other people how it's doing and why you're making changes to the menu or you're asking for input from other people. What changes could you make to the menu? Because you're trying to make it better. You're trying to make more profit. So if I, if I, if I had a big spreadsheet to look at with lots of rows and columns and you look at it going, oh, that's too much stuff, just cover a whole bunch of it and just look at the first couple of columns. And after you get your head around, okay, well, I know what that is. Move the paper over. What's the next column? Move the paper over. And then pretty soon, everything's familiar to you. But when you first look at it, it can be overwhelming. So my advice is you, you do for real, uh, uh, you know, use a piece of paper if you have a financial sheet you have to look at that's overwhelming. So in this case, um, this is the stuff we've done several times now. Um, this menu has 12 items, 12 main courses. This is the number we're sold. So this is, let's just say this is a week. Um, so we've sold 752 main courses uh, this week. And how many of each item is right here? We sold 85 of these and 125 of those and 42. Then, and when you add all those up, it comes to 752. And that says N, that's the value N, which is a pretty normal designator for a number. So that this week we know we sold 752. Well, how many of each we've sold independently? Right there. Pretty normal stuff. Well, what's the percentage of tri-tip? Well, it's 85 divided by 752 is 11.3%. That's the menu mix. That's how, how popular the tri-tip tri steak is 11.3% of our customers this week chose the tri-tip. And if we were due to the beef prime rib, we would do the same thing. We would divide how many individual units by the total and it would give us a percentage of how popular was our prime rib. So I'm just gonna do the first row with you. So uh, our food costs, we've done a food cost card. So for the tri-tip, we've got a food cost card that we've done, a recipe card that we've done. We've done it in menu planning, you've done it a lot. Uh, you're working on it in your, your DAC class now. Um, so we've done the costing, how much the steak is and the potato and the sauce, whatever goes with it. And it comes to 775, that's the standard cost. That's what we expect it to cost. If we make it, the, everybody makes it the way they're supposed to and gives the portion they're supposed to and puts the amount in the sauce they're supposed to. Um, and if we uh, look at our menu, it says we sell out this item for, for $21.50. That's the menu, that's what the customer pays. That's the menu selling price. So the next, we have that information. It's pretty normal stuff. It's, it's, we, we have it, we use it all the time. So the first item that we have to calculate, so the next columns we have to calculate, what's the contribution margin? Well, the contribution margin we talked about last week and the week before, I think is the, the gross profit is another way to say it. It's the, how much we sell it to the customer, subtract the cost of the ingredients, and the result, whatever the difference is, um, is the contribution margin or gross profit. So in this case, it's twenty-one fifty. Subtract seven seventy-five. How much it costs us to make, and it's thirteen seventy-five. So our contribution margin (CM) or gross profit is thirteen seventy-five. So then you say, okay, well, what's the menu cost? How much does it cost us to um, this week to sell these eighty-five items? Well, if it's that we sold eighty-five of them and they each cost us 775, then 85 times 775 is our menu cost for this item is $658. This week, we sold 85 and the groceries, the steak and the potatoes for all 85 was $658. Well, what was the revenue? Well, we sold 85 of them. We sell them for 2150. 85 times 2150 is the revenue is 1,827. So it's the same numbers we started with. We're just, we're just doing another step with the same information. There's no mystery to it. And the contribution margin is, we already figured out the contribution margin. For each item, it's 1375. Well, if we sold 85 of them, 85 times 1375 is 1,016875. 1, so that's the extent, get this piece of paper here. That's the extent of the sheet that we have to do now. We just have to get, we just have to do this groundwork. We need this background work before we can go on and do the parts in blue. You can't do the parts in blue until this is filled in. But it looks big, it looks like there's a lot of stuff, but we just did the first one. It's, it's just this information multiplied or subtracted by itself. There, there's, no, there's nothing you have to go get, it's right there. So I'm gonna break into groups. There's, um, if you look at that sheet uh, on the right-hand side, uh, it's in uh, orange. So we've done the first one together. Um, so, so I'm doing this differently for the first time. So I'm, I have to remember what I'm doing. So the first one, the tri-tip, um, we've already done. Um, so, um, 
See, I made a mistake. Anyway, don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to break into how many, how many we got? Uh, how many are there of you? 35. Okay, so I'll break you into, uh, there's, there's, we'll do 10. We'll do 10, 10 items. We'll pick one to 10. So I'm going to break into 10 groups. So if your group is number one, if your group is, this will move for me. If your group is number one, you're going to do the pork belly. If your group is number two, you're going to do the lamb ragu. So I'm going to break into groups. I'll give you 10 minutes. I just want you, you don't have to print anything. Just take a piece of paper. One of you can write it down and just do the calculations just like we just did. Um, if you want to take a shot at figuring out how to, you know, whether this is a star, like in this case, the tri-tip is a star. If you think you understand how that works, uh, go ahead and try it if you wish. So I'll do the first one, the prime rib, and then uh, I'll just uh, shout out somebody from your team just to give me the, the numbers for the other one. So for the prime rib, if we only sold 125 units uh, to do the percentage, right? It's 125 divided by 752. So that's 16%. Uh, contribution margin is 1995, subtract 795. So it's $12 even. We multiply, so if you think of these three columns, these three columns are multiplied by this to get these three columns. It's this multiplied by the, uh, this to get this. It's this multiplied by, sorry, this multiplied by this to get this. And this one multiplied by that one to get that one. And we can't do, um, uh, I could guess, but I can't do these things yet until we do one more step. So the first step is to get all this data in, and then we can use that to do the next step. So um, next group, number one, that was the Dino's group. What have you got for a percentage? 5.6. Okay. And then just read off the numbers here. 10.25, Perfect. Okay. Uh, lamb was, um, who have I got? Gurpreet's group. And uh, so the lamb ragu is 4.4. And if we do those calculations, it's 12.70 for the contribution margin for one. The menu cost to cook 33 of these is 173. The revenue, how much money we bring in, 33 times 17.95. And the contribution margin total was 1270 times 33. Uh, pork tenderloin, that was? Uh, uh, that's, yeah, that's our seven? chef. Uh, yep. It's old menu mix, 8%. Um, <clears throat> item CM is going to be 13.45. Uh, menu costs uh, 363 and the revenue 1250.7. Now we just didn't get the last one. Okay. Yet. <clears throat> From eight 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 seven seventy okay. is what I is what I got is what I got anyway. Yeah, um, that, and that one is calculated by just it's the contribution margin. Uh, so we, we figured out thirteen forty five. Yeah. Multiplied by how many units? Sixty six sold. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. Yeah. Uh, lasagna. That five point five eight. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, nine point five five. Yep. Uh, one four two point eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, five four three point nine. Yeah. And uh, four zero point one. Perfect. Four zero one point one. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, chicken fajita. That was Nolan's group. Yeah, for we got six point four. Yep. Uh, eleven point seven. Mm -hmm. uh, 204, yeah. 765.6, mm -hmm. and 561.6. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Salmon, that was uh, our spritz group? Yeah. Um, it is 10.2%. Perfect. 12.93. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 463.54. Mm-hmm. Four uh four hundred and fifty-nine point fifteen. Yep. Oh sorry, one thousand four hundred and fifty nine point fifteen. So I got ten point seven four percent. And the last one is the contribution margin. So we just figured that out a second ago at twelve fifteen. So it's mm -hmm. twelve fifteen multiplied by seventy nine, and that comes yeah. to fifty nine eighty five. Okay. 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 And next one, Chicken Wellington uh Zarina. Okay. So I, I rounded mine is rounded up to six percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Okay. okay. So uh, the next one is ten uh, point forty five. Yep. Uh, the next one is um twenty uh 
mm -hmm. oh, sorry i did the wrong one so i have to calculate again so it should be 672.75 correct yep and the last one is 470.25 perfect thank you uh seafood that was uh vasu's group uh, it's uh, for the percentage 7.85 perfect and for it's 13.15 uh, dollars okay next one is 401.2 mm -hmm. next one is 1.17705 okay next one is 775.85 perfect and the last one was uh, Manjot's group? Uh, the menu mix we got was uh, 6.7, uh, but we rounded it to 6.8. Yep, perfect. Uh, the contribution margin, mm -hmm. $10.20. Yep. The menu cost, 242.25. 242.25, yep. The Menu revenue seven sixty two forty five. Mm -hmm. And the last one is five twenty twenty cents. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So so that's just using the first three or four columns. It's just using the information we have and you just have to calculate it. And it's the same whether there's 10 menu items, this is 12, if there's 20, doesn't matter. It works exactly the same way. You just put more rows in with more items and you just recalculate it. So that's, that's you need that base information or we need that base information right now before we can do the next steps. So uh, we know the 752 is already calculated. That's the total, how many units we sold, like what, what, cause we use that number for the menu mix. So the next thing we're gonna calculate is I. So I is the total of this column. So this was the menu cost. This was, we figured out how many of the, in this case, the 85 tri-tips, if they cost us 775 to make, then the ingredients cost us 885 times 775 and it cost us $658 for the groceries, the ingredients to make 85 tri-tips. And we did that for all of these, right? You guys just did that. So this I is this added up. That's just the sum of that total. That's all it is. No, no other calculations, no mystery. Just add up everything. So this whole menu, if we, if we sold 752 of these, your grocery bill should be $4,665 for this week. If everybody, you know, if everybody made the right portion and the, you know, the, the standards, recipe standards were adhered to. So next thing is J. Guess what J is? J is total revenue. That would be that column added up. So you just take from the tri-tips, the customer paid $21.50 a portion. We brought in $1,827.50 for the tri-tip. And we, each of you calculated each one. So we just add all of them up and that's our total revenue. So for this week, it cost us $4,665.09, and our customers gave us $13,755. So that's the cost and the sales. Guess what we can do with that? We can figure out our food cost. So uh, if we take I, which was the cost of our goods, that in our food cost triangle, that's the top number, the portion cost, divide it by the sales on the bottom, that was our menu sales, how much money we brought in, you divide it, we get 33.91%. So this is something we've been doing since right, level one, just cost of goods divided by uh, sales or menu item cost divided by menu selling price. It's, it's the same math. This is all the items added together, cost this much. All the revenue added together costs this much on the menu. You divide I by J and there's a little hint here. Um, the cost is 33.91%. Okay, so we're just adding those columns up. M, big surprise here, M, guess what? It's the addition of the contribution margins for each item. So you add up every item here, these 12 items. We figured out what the contribution margin was for all of these. And for each one individually, we just did that. You add them all up. So if you add up the contribution margin, it's 909, $9,090.51. And this number should match this. This subtract this is this. That's the way it should be. So but we don't do it that way. We add up the column. How much did each item, uh, was the gross profit or the contribution margin for each item? So we just add all that up and we add up that column. Are you with me so far? Any, any questions? So we're just taking the data that's there and those three columns and adding it up. And then we get these three plus this one as a bonus. 
So two more, two more things to calculate. And once we calculate these last two things, we can do this, which is the whole purpose of doing this. So up until now, we've just been taking the same numbers that we've got, that we started with off our menu, and we've just been manipulating them, just doing something with them. So the uh, O, this, this 1209 is O, it's uh, calculated by taking M divided by M, N, M divided by N. So M we just calculated was the total contribution margin for all the items added together. And we're dividing it by N, which is how many units we sold. So all we're doing is calculating the average contribution margin for every single item. So this is the contribution margin for the tri-tips, contribution margin for the prime rib, contribution margin for the pork belly, you add them all up. So that's the gross profit for each item. Add them all up, divide them by how many items. Some items we make more money on, some items we make less money on. So we just want the average. The average, if we take them all up, take them all out, add all that up and divide it by, we sold 752, the average is 1209. On average, our items made us a, a gross profit or contribution margin of 1209. So that's the first number we need. So if we look at the, this column here that we're gonna fill in next, it's asking you, is it high or low? Is it thumbs up, it's a good item, or it's not a good item? Is it a good item we're, we're keeping, we don't have to worry about, or is it an item we have to look at and think about, is there a problem? This is um, the graphic display. So once this spreadsheet that we're doing is turned into a, a graphic, a picture, this is what it would look like. If the item um, is very popular, we sell a lot of it, it's gonna be higher up on that axis. If it's something we make money on, it's gonna be higher up on this axis. So once you plot those two values, it's gonna be somewhere on this graph, on this chart. So that's what we're, that's what we're gonna finish up doing. And then you could ask Excel to create this, this chart for you, this graph for you. So there's four choices. Either, it, either um, uh, well, I guess this is probably the best one. We sell a lot of it. It's very popular, customers like it. They buy a lot of them. And we also make a lot of money on it. If, if we sell a lot and we make a lot of money, that's a star. We like that one. We're going we're gonna to keep that one going probably. The opposite of that is, oops, sorry. The opposite of that is it doesn't make us any money and we don't sell any. So it's a dog. There's, there's a big question mark there. Why? It's on the menu. Nobody likes it and customers don't buy it or we don't sell very much of it. Not that they don't like it. We don't sell very much of it. And even when we sell it, we don't make any money. So it's, it's low, low. It's two negatives. This is HH, high, high. This is good. Over here, I keep clicking on that, sorry. Over here, we have the plow horse. So it's very popular, customers like it. So it's H, customers like it, but it doesn't make us any money. So it's low. The customer, the public likes it, but as a business owner, I'm not too happy with it because we, we sell a lot of it, but I don't make any money on it. And the fourth option, the only other thing it could be is a puzzle. And that means it makes us a lot of money. I'm happy, I like that item, but we don't sell any. So if it makes us a lot of money, we don't sell any, it doesn't really help my business. I could make, the mo I could make all kinds of money on that thing, but nobody buys it, it doesn't help me. So, so when we do the analysis we're doing right now with that Excel sheet, it has to be one of these, HH, LL, HL, or LH. It has to be one of those four. And then if you wanted to make a graphic, you would, you would plot it on here. We're saying contribution margin. I put an H in. The contribution margin is the amount it makes per item. In this case, it's 1375. Is it high? Is it higher than what? Well, we just figured that out. It's 1209. If it's higher, if it makes us more than the average of 1209, then we like it. In this case, it makes 1375. 1375, definitely higher than 1209. We're good with that one. We like that. It gets an H. Uh, next one, uh, prime rib. Uh, I did that one as well. So <clears throat> it's, our goal is, has to be 1209. Is it high or low? Would be low. Yeah, it's low, right? It's only 12 bucks. It's close, but it's not 1209. The average is 1209. We just figured out and it's below. But does that mean necessarily you remove that item from the, the menu? Nope. Nope. This is just analysis. This is just a tool to help you decide what you're going to do next. So this is, this is going to help you decide, as you're saying, do we get rid of it? Do we change it? Do we, you know, how, what are we going to do with it? So uh, otherwise, you're looking at a menu and you're just thinking, you're just using your spider senses. Should I, should I keep it? Should I change it? I don't know. It seems like a good, I like it. Nobody, he likes it. Nobody likes it. How, how, would, you, how would you be successful in business if you're just randomly choosing? So this helps you 
uh, choose choose the item and make a decision. Or it also backs you up if you say to your boss, I had it happen to me with my boss. I said, we're taking a pork tenderloin off. And he said, I love that item. And I said, we don't sell any. He goes, yes, we do. I buy it all the time. I said, you're the only one that buys it. You're living in the hotel. We sell three a week. It's you. We never sold a single other one. He goes, oh. So I said, we can't have it on the menu. I'm prepping it every day and, and, and getting it ready. And for some reason, it doesn't sell. So I'm taking it off. He goes, well, I really like it. I said, okay, the day you want it, just tell me, we'll make it for you. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch it with something else that makes us money. What's the point of wasting the space on the menu if it doesn't make us any money? So he would, if, as the boss, he would have insisted that I kept it. But I just showed him this and said, look at, look at the numbers. And he's going, oh, okay, you're right. Change it. But if I wouldn't have had this, he would have, he would have argued with me and said, no, nope, I think it's really, I love it. I think it's a great item. One of your best items. In his mind, it was good. And it was a good item. I mean, I was proud of it, but it's just that the regular customers didn't buy it. So this, this is a very helpful tool. So you take the emotion out of it. You actually um, make the right decision, hopefully. Or that actually makes sense. Yeah. Informed decision. You may not, still might not be the right decision, but you're doing the best you can, right? Yeah. Um, so pork belly, is it high or low? Our goal is 1209. Oh, uh, it's high. Higher. Mm -hmm. Side thirteen forty five. Oh no, the, the pork belly. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, that's okay. No, I was going for the ten one. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, ten ten twenty five. So it's low, uh, obviously. Next one, lamb ragu. Low. Well, two seventy. No, I'm sorry, higher. Yeah, twelve seventy is higher. Yeah. Uh, pork tenderloin. Higher. Yeah. Thirteen forty five. Yeah, it's higher. The next one, lasagna. Lower. 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 Okay. Next one. Lower two. Yeah. Okay. A higher. Yeah, that's a high one. 1293 instead of 1203. That's good. 90 cents higher. Uh, slightly higher higher for the shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. Higher. And uh, Wellington is low. low right? It's only 1045. Lower. And then high, low. High. high low. High. And the last low. one, Chef's Bell, low. low, right? Okay, so, so we have half the equation or half the analysis done. We figured out, is it high or low from a contribution? Does it make us money? So we already have several here that are, that are wonderful, that are making us money apparently, and other ones that we got a question mark. But again, they have, there's four choices. It can be high, high, low, high, high, low, or low, low. So we got to do this other part and then we can figure out what it is. So to get this part, this is probably the only complicated part of the sheet. If this is 12 items. This menu has 12 items. So it's number one, the formula, the math, the method is one divided by 12 down here, one divided by 12. If it was a 10 item menu, it'd be one divided by 10. If it was 20 items, it would be one divided by 20. Doesn't, whatever the number of items that you're analyzing, it's the number one divided by that. So we're getting an average. So if this was 10, it would be one divided by 10, right? If we think about that just to use simple numbers. If we had... Uh, 10 menu items and we took the number one and we said okay what's one divided by 10 it's um 10 percent right one divided by 10 number one divided by 10 is 10 so if i said to you this menu has 10 items and the average if we look at the menu, there's 10 items. The average would be 10. If the item doesn't sell more than 10, it's, it's not good. Is that a fair statement? So if you think of the menu we did last week, the week before, where we have five menu items and there's 100 customers and it's 20, 20, 20, 20. Five 20s, five times 20 is 100. If, it, if an item didn't sell 20, was it a bad item in that example last week? Was, is that fair to say the item is, is bad? Possibly. I don't, I don't think so because no, you can have like, I, I, I think, I think that's a little, um, over what's the word I'm looking for, uh, over demanding or something, right? That's not fair. If the item sells 18 or 19, it's still a good item, right? So, so the formula, it would be times 0.7 or 70%. So in the case of last week, if there was five items on a menu and you sold a hundred, is it likely you're going to sell 20 of every item? No. But if you multiply 20 by uh, 0.7, that would be 14. You would say, you know what, if I have five items, and as long as I sell, every time I sell 100, if I sell more than 14, I think it's a good item. If it sells less than 14, that's not good. So this is exactly the same, the same math. In this case, it's one divided by 12. I'll get rid of this here. One divided by 12. <laughs> So, it, so chef, it's 70% of that 10% is when you're basically. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it's one divided by 12 because we have 12 items. 
and you multiply that by 0.7 and you get 5.83. If there was 10 items, like the example I just gave you, it would be one divided by 10, it would be 10% times 0.7, it would be seven. So if this was 10 items, as long as we sell more than seven, seven percent it's a good item less than seven not good because Chef, where does that 70 percent come from that's my question i'm sorry uh no it's okay it, yeah it's a, I it, think it's it's a standard maybe. number yeah you know you could argue say well it's you know i think it should be 7.5 it should some be you know, 7.3 it should be 6.8 it should be eight um the industry standard is seven seven percent seventy percent Okay, so that's gonna, always going to be like that throughout the, the sheets and, and the activities. Every, every sheet I do will be 70%, and every place I've seen in industry is always 0.7 or 70%. Oh, um, right. Again, you could change yeah. if you If you wanted to change it, you could, but it's not really not really changing anything. Yes. Okay, no, I was just wondering. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's, that, no, that's, that's, a, that's an important question because it's kind of, where did this number come from? Somebody else had a comment? So, Chef, um, if I have this correctly... So you divide one by uh, X number of items mm -hmm. and the 70% is more or less the realistic amount of percentage that you should be expecting of that item being purchased. Exactly. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I, I understood exactly yeah. what the 70 represented. Yeah. No, that's a good way to express it. It's what <laughs> realistic or fair to expect from that item to be de to deliver, like as far as popularity. And I think that's a, that's a, a, an excellent way to to describe it, Owen. And this is the formula to determine if a menu item is uh, expensive enough or not expensive enough. No, this is um, uh, menu mix. So the expensive okay. enough was the the one we just did. This is high or low on this column. So it's higher or low. And whatnot, right? So is it higher or low compared to what? Well, now we have a number. Is it higher or low? higher or lower than 5.83 on popularity. Do people like it? Is it a popular item? Well, we've already figured out the popularity of each item. So the first one was 11.3. 11.3% of our customers choose this item. Is that higher than this number that we've come up with at 5.83 as a benchmark? Yes, it's absolutely higher than 5.83, so it's high. So in this case, it's high um, money maker for us, high gross profit, and it's popular. So HH is star. We're, we're good with this item. Just keep, you know, it doesn't mean we can't tweak it or, uh, uh, you know, make it better, but there, we, there's no panic. It's making us money and people like it. So we did good. The second item, the prime rib. So it's popular. It's low. It's, we're, we're after 5.83. So is it more popular as a percentage than 5.83? Yeah, it's high. Yeah, it's really high. 16, it's the highest one actually, right? 16.6 .6 is the highest number. So it's really popular, but... It doesn't, it doesn't exceed its low on profitability. Now, we talked about that. Well, it's 12.09 versus, or sorry, 12.09 is our goal. It's off by nine cents. It's, it's below. There's no doubt about it. It's only a little low, but it's still low, you know? So, you know, what would you do here? If, you, if this was you and you're looking at this going, well, it's low. We should take it off the menu, right? I, I, would, I would just increase the price of it. Yeah, because it's pretty popular, right? You're going to upset an awful. We're going to upset 125 customers because it looks like they come to this restaurant. It's the most popular thing. They come to your restaurant because of the prime rib. You you do this and you go, yeah, I don't think it's making us money. Let's take it off. Next week, the customers show up. Where's my prime rib? Oh, we got rid of it. Are you kidding me? That's why we come here. So, Jeff, yep. I have a question regarding to that. Like, uh, what is better to do in that case? Uh, increase the price or reduce the portion? That's excellent comment, Viviana. What would you do? I was going to ask something similar, but I, I want to hear your answer. Yeah. I, I think it's better to reduce the portion. No? Okay. Any idea? So again, we don't know the item. We don't see what's on it, but any idea what maybe you could do? So if you reduce this price, oh. mm. well, that's okay. What would you want to reduce the price to? Like how much you want to modify it? What do you think it's a, it, what you need to do? It's, it's what I was going to say. Like if it's the prime rib on itself, it's like, you're not going to reduce the steak. Like it's a standardized steak probably. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that, dude. That's the reason you have people come to the restaurant because of that. Yeah. But if we're talking about like, I, I don't know, the, the vegetarian uh, lasagna, I, I don't know. You could probably change some of the ingredients, try to lower your cost there and, and get a higher profit. I, I don't know. It's hard. But, but then again, I, you're going to know the recipes very, very well. And like, yeah, but I think, you know, just sort of 
you know, just generalized thinking. I think you're absolutely right. If the, if you keep the item, the customers come in next week with their buddies because they love this thing and this and the primary is smaller, the meat, they came for the meat and it's smaller. They're going, what the heck happened? It's the same and price, the price it's, it's less. There's yeah. going to be a revolt. So um, you, you don't want to mess with the meat. But what's, what's on the plate with the meat, right? Maybe so, some mush, some veggies. Yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe you're serving, I don't know, I'm just going to guess, it, asparagus with it or something. Yeah. Is, that's not cheap. Is there something you could do that it wouldn't offend anybody? They'd still enjoy the state, the prime rib, but we just take off the asparagus and save some money. Cause how much money do you have to save to make this a star? Change the broccolini, asparagus broccolini. to green beans, chef. Yeah. yeah. Green beans. Yeah. yeah broccolini. Whatever. Green beans are significantly cheaper. Yeah. And they may not be as potent in taste, but they still look good, but they're still the same bright green color. Yeah. Yeah. Root vegetables. So still, it'll still look good on the plate. Root vegetables are my go-to thing. They're cheap, they're durable, they're easy to handle, they last, they hold well. Um, everybody pretty much likes carrots, rutabaga, and, and parsnip, you know? So, how, but how much are we talking here? How much money do we have to save to make this a star? Like, uh, not much. A low, little low over nine cents? Nine cents. <laughs> we, have to, we have to change it by nine cents. So what if we lower the cost by 10 cents? So we just... Um, figure out we're going to substitute the whatever the expensive asparagus for as i said green beans or broccoli or mixed roast vegetables is that enough we're at 1210 yeah. and our we've changed but because that item is part of the mix like it's part of this whole calculation our goal now is 1211 right okay, so that, that's what i was going to ask it's, actually. it's part of this whole calculation so nine cents or ten cents wasn't enough but if we change it to 775 Oh, now we're good. We dropped it by tw basically 20 cents in cost. So we saved 20 cents by switching, let's just say, I don't know, from asparagus to green beans. Um, we're now good. We're at 12. 12 is our goal now because our goal has changed because we've changed the menu, the numbers. Um, but we're at 12.20. So it's, it's, we just had to tweak that little bit and now we're, now we're good. We're star. Um, what if you already had ro you know, basic root vegetables or roasted vegetables on it? Um, can, you, can you suggest possibly anything else you could do? Because we don't want to, we don't want to touch the, the roast, right? We've we've agreed that they want to mess with this. The what's your, size what's your starch? Yeah, I mean, maybe you're giving them a loaded. What's your baked starch? Potato. Are you serving? Are you serving with a, a small pasta dish? Are you using a baked potato? What, what what's your what's your? Because there's usually the three elements on a plate. What's your what's your third? Yeah. So so that's because where you have to, on what you start. Yeah. So that's where you have to not jump to conclusions. You got to step back and say, okay, it's, I think the simplest thing to do, we don't want to mess with the price of 1995. We don't need to make much movement here to make it profitable at 795. What are, what are the customers getting? They're getting this piece of meat. They're getting this vegetable and they're getting this potato. The vegetables are already affordable. We're not messing with the steak, but we're giving them a loaded baked potato. Uh, Is it coming with the sauce? Eh? Is it coming with the sauce as well? Yeah, maybe there's a sauce there, but sauce usually not a high ticket item and not usually a high cost item. But a baked potato with cheese and sour cream um, is, and some bacon bits, it, you know, the sour cream and the bacon bits will probably cost you a dollar. So if you said to them, okay, from now on, you get a regular baked potato with butter. But if you want the loaded, you want the sour cream and the bacon bits and the chives, it's an extra buck fifty. So... <laughs> So, Chef, you are saying like it's better to modify a little bit the recipe instead of uh, reduce the portion or increase the price? No, not necessarily. It really depends because if in your village, in your town, everybody else is charging twenty four ninety five for the prime rib and you're at nineteen ninety five, is it because you're the cheapest that you're popular? Then maybe you don't want to, you know, you don't want to mess with that. But maybe, maybe you should be closer to their price. Maybe you should be twenty four ninety five like everybody else because like right now I just read online today, 11%, the cost of food has gone up. So it's not your fault. It, the cost of food has gone up and you still want to give them good quality food. So there's no, there's no correct answer. It depends. So you have yeah. to, you're going to use this information. You're going to decide, I think in this case, we're only off by a few cents. We'll just, we'll, we'll keep it at nineteen ninety five, and we'll just lower the, the cost of the product. But you may also say, you know what, we can't lower the cost of the product. We, we, you know, the product we're giving, we're really happy. We, we don't want to change it. We don't want to make it smaller or anything. We have to, we have to put the price up. We have no choice. So, um, again, you have, the, you have the information now to make that decision. Mm, okay. um, pork belly. So is it beating our 5.83% as far as popularity? It's low. It's low, yep. Yeah. So it's a dog. Next one. Low as well. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a puzzle. I really is. So contribution, it makes us money, but people don't, people don't buy it. Doesn't mean they don't like it. But like an example I gave with my general manager, it's a good item. Everybody likes it, but nobody buys it. He likes it. So it's not the fact, the quality or the taste or anything, it's just something people don't buy. It could be the season, who knows what, it could be anything. So, so if you did this at the end of the month, you'd look back and say, well, that was a popular item, what happened? Well, it could have been uh, like in the next one, uh, the lamb ragu, the one we just did, lamb ragu. Maybe it's, it's really warm outside. Who wants to eat a hot lamb ragu? It tastes amazing um, on a hot day. So, so normally it's, it's a very good seller, but just because of the weather and the, you know, it's not a good seller. So should you ditch it? Well, next month it's probably going to be back up again. But again, you just make the decision based on what you know, um, but don't, you don't jump to conclusions and just say, we're, we're, we're getting rid of it. Why are you getting rid of it? Or what can we do to change it? That's, that's the purpose of this. I think so, that it's a fine line between knowing if it's whether profitable to keep that eye on the menu until like next season or that. that's what the hard part about is. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Would, so if this was, if this was early in the spring and you saw it drop, so, so the, the lamb ragu, it started to drop off. You're thinking, okay, time to change. Let's switch this up for something else because this is going to be a dog, you know, a bad seller for the next three or four months until September when it cools off again. So it's a seasonal thing. We'll change up. And that's part of our plan. Um, that's absolutely right. You just got to look at this and, and make an intelligent decision the best you can. Um, and if you're not printing your menu, if you're only printing your menu uh, once a year, then you, you have to accept this, that, you know what, we put it on and, um, you know, we understood in advance that it was only going to sell on those cold days. Just like if you put a chilled soup on, it's not going to sell in the wintertime. Uh, it's only going to sell in the warmer days. Um, so maybe you should be doing your menu twice a year. Maybe once a year is not a smart business decision. Again, there's no, there's no right answer for your, it depends on your location and you're the manager, you, you're the owner, the chef, you, you make the decision with the information you have. Yeah. And that's what we're here to get this perspective. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, like you could also like, again, you, when you said with the menu, but let's say you are, um, changing your menu regularly, you can put into different places that are in strategic points that people will look at first. Right. So, so, um, to make people actually notice the item itself. Absolutely. So the, so there is, could be an item like the puzzle that it, that it makes you money, but you're not selling it well. Maybe it's, it's lost in the middle. And if you really want to sell it, cause it makes you good money, then it should be either one of the top two or the bottom two people buy the first and the last items on, in a list. So um, maybe just the location on the menu is all you have to do is reprint your menu and just move it. That's all you did. So there's, 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 again, there's no one solution. So for the next one, it's uh, high, low and high. It's a plow horse. Again, it, it makes us, um, it, it makes sales. It's, it's positive for the customer. People like it. We're selling 6.4%, but doesn't really make us much money. So we got to question that. So if we go through the, those ones, the next ones, we got another two stars. We got another plow horse again, that, um, that uh, makes us money. Sorry, it doesn't make us money, but it's popular with our customers. So if things are popular, you want to be careful taking them off, right? That could be one of the reasons that people are coming. They're selling a lot of it, but you're selling a lot and not making any money. That, that's, not a good, that's not a good situation. So how are you going to, how are you going to fix that? Um, and as we just discussed, there's no right answer. You're going to have to figure that out. So, so this is the whole purpose of doing this. It's not emotional. You're going to plug the real numbers in. These are the real sales from this month. These are hopefully accurate food costs. You did your food costs and the, you know, the cooks or your staff are actually making it the way they're supposed to. And then this is what the customer's paying. So all the rest of this data just comes from those first four columns. And then you can look at this and sit back and go, okay, what do I have to do here? Where, where's, my, where's my work? Am I good with the way it is right now? Or do I have to do something? So uh, my first question would be, we talked about the plow horse, like in this case, the prime rib. We just had to tweak it a little bit, leave it as is, um, or... As Viviana said, do we change the, the cost or do we change the selling price? Yes, it depends. You, you have to figure that out. Uh, the puzzle, we talked about that. Maybe um, uh, it makes us money, but we don't sell a lot. Maybe we change the location. Maybe we change the wording of it. Maybe we call it uh, lamb ragu and people go, I don't have no idea what that is. It sounds disgusting. Maybe we call it, uh, you know, spring lamb braised with fresh herbs and blah, blah, blah. And so, oh my, or tagine. And oh my, that's, that's, I, I haven't had that since Morocco. So yeah, I'm buying that. So maybe, maybe the, the way you describe it is all you have to do. And just that, that switch will make it more popular. Um, what about dogs? Do, does a dog just get ditched automatically? It's bad. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta shoot the dog. Well, it's a vegetarian item. So you have to replace it with another vegetarian item. That's an important 
a very important uh, point that you're making, Matteo, because when you design the menu, you don't design the menu for the items. You design the menu for the, um, the category, the, the overall structure of the menu. And you've decided in this case that we have a couple of beef items, a pork, two porks, a lamb, a vegetarian, a chicken, two chickens. Like, so this is your mix that, that you're going to have. If you get rid of the vegetarian, you, you don't put a chicken in, you put another vegetarian in because you've already structured the menu in such a way that not everything is crusted, not everything is beef, not everything is grilled. You've done all that work. And seasonally, you might change the items, but they have to fit into that category normally. So in this case, you're absolutely right. You're going to get rid of the lasagna, perhaps, because it doesn't make us money, nobody buys it. But we have to, we have, to have another vegetarian item. So, right. so we could change that up. We could create a more interesting item. Um, or what, what if you're happy with the lasagna? What if the people that buy it, I mean, it's not that bad. It's 5.6%. It's just below the 5.8. So it's not horrible. What if, what if this is your, your fig, signature personal family passed down from grandma and Nana's uh, recipe? What if you love this recipe? Uh, I would say that, uh, this is the, like, since it's the only vegetarian item on the menu and it's a lasagna, some people like pasta is a very uh it like depends on your mood and also vegetarian items should be appealing to everyone not just vegetarians if you want to eat something that has no meat in it you should be able to say oh look at that it's like a stir fry or something a vegetarian stir fry uh so it sh if you're only having one vegetarian item i try to make it more versatile or maybe just incorporate one of the other dogs into a different vegetarian item. So you have more uh, coverage if mm -hmm. you wanted to keep this specific one, since it's uh, not that far under. Yeah, no, and those are good points because you're absolutely right. That's one thing, um, just because I'm not a vegetarian doesn't mean I can't have it. Um, I'm, I'm a meat eater, but I feel like, I feel that lasagna sounds good or the stir fry sounds good. I wanna have that. I don't care if it doesn't have any meat in it. You, what you make is good. So um, the, the problem with this one, sales are pretty good. It's the profitability is an issue. So again, you'd look at this and go, okay, you know what? I'm okay with it being a low seller. We have to have a vegetarian item. I'm very proud of this item. Um, so can we, can we tweak the price? So again, there's no right answer. You, you're going to have to come up with a strategy to address that. Is there any, any time you would have an item that we, we have here as a dog that you'd say, you know what? I'm okay with it being a dog. Is there anything that would, can you think of a situation where there's a dog and you're going, yep, yeah, it's, Perfect. Stay in. I'm good with the dog. The only case oh. I would see a dog being okay is if it barely impacts anything at all, but like people still buy it and people like it. It's not that hard to make. It doesn't take up too much labor, but ideally even then you should try and make it uh, reliable or at least as close to being reliable I think it's because dogs are undesirable. If it's a signature dish from the restaurant too, like it's sometimes not always signature dishes will sell that much or be that profitable. So yeah, I don't know, but it has to be there. I don't know. So yeah, it makes a statement or something or whatever. It, it's a, it's a profile item and you don't care if you don't sell it. You just, you, you, it's important that you're there because people talk about it. It's a novelty yeah. item. Yeah. Uh, fine. The, the, the menu item I think of is a kid's menu. So uh, if you don't have chicken fingers or fish sticks, uh, pogo's on the menu. Um, families won't come in because they're not buying prime rib for the, for the four-year-old. Um, but do you make money on the chicken fingers? No, they get pop and ice cream and all kinds of stuff for six bucks or something. Like, I don't make any money on that. Do we sell a lot of it? No, we get a couple of week. But so it doesn't make us money. We don't sell very much, but you can't get rid of it because the, the families aren't going to come in if you don't have a kid's menu. So that would be another example where you've made a decision, a conscious decision that, no, it's okay. I know it doesn't make it. Your boss is saying, hey, it doesn't make money. It's a dog. Get rid of it. No, I'm, it's good. If we we have to do it. It's, it's a, it's a thing. So that would be the other thing. So, so you don't want to jump to conclusions that just because it's not a star that it, you have to get rid of it. Um, maybe it has to be modified, maybe it has to be adjusted, but at least you have the information here to help you make that decision. Any questions on that? Pretty straightforward, I think. I mean, again, I know it's a lot, but if, as you go through it, 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 pretty much makes sense. We're using that first four columns of information just to, to do some analysis. Like my question is like if it's not really popular and it's not really selling, like you know, you're, how long could that menu item stay on the menu if it's not if it's not popular? 
Well, I mean, that's, doesn't that's, really that's, much that's, revenue. No, it's not making any revenue. You, you, it's using a space on the menu. As Phoenix said, if it's not hurting you, if you're not selling any, it's not really impacting your profitability because you don't sell it anyways. Even if you don't make any money, you don't sell any. Um, so it doesn't, it's not hurting you. It's not, it's not bringing you down. You are using some real estate on your menu for absolutely nothing. So that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You're also having money, uh, spending money, making it. So if it goes bad, you have to make another one. You have, and like, even if with freezer life, sometimes it goes dry and you have to make another one. So you're just spending money if you're not selling it. That's extremely important. That's a, that's a very good point. So if, if you have a small <laughs> freezer, like you're just taking up a lot of space and that also costs money. Yeah. Or if it's a fresh item, you're prepping every day, just in case we sell one, you don't sell one for two days. Now you got to throw it out. So you, yeah, you're not going to, you're not going to make a ramekin of a lasagna. <laughs> no, no. So, so there, to, to answer your question, there's no right answer. You got to look at that and saying, if we're prepping it every day and every two days we throw the prep out and then we sell one and then we don't sell it again, we're prepping it and we, that that's hurting your business that you're, you're wasting food. Um, so they are paying your chef $20 an hour to stay, takes about an hour to make yeah. lasagna. So to, pre to prep it and then you're paying them to throw it in the garbage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so. So you're going to have to just make that decision if, if you could uh, manage it. And if you say, well, we're going to be printing a menu in, in another six weeks, you know, seasonal change or whatever, um, you'll just deal with it, cope with it until then. And then it's coming off the menu um, or you're going to modify and change it. So again, there's no right answer, but at least now you have the information, you can decide what you should do or shouldn't do. Um, and and uh, there's, there's no other, I'm trying to think of, there's, no, there's no other, like there's no other rule. It's, it's up to your business. If you're changing your monthly monthly, menu, your menu monthly, you can just, you know, just deal with it for another couple of weeks. If you're changing the menu annually and you just reprinted the menu, that's a long time to wait. So you got to think about what you're going to do. And it's already printed on the menu, the price and everything. So what are you going to do? Are you going to modify it or substitute or change it? Um, again, that's a business decision, operational decision you'll have to make, but at least you can, you know, at least you can make the decision.